It is tough going at the moment. Just over a week to go until rugby's biggest party and England's bunting is sagging a bit. But there is still time, isn't there? Fingers crossed. Welcome to The Good, The Bad and The Rugby in partnership with our good friends at Continental Tyres. We are back together for the first time this season. Not a lot of time for holiday chat. You're grinning very I'm just very happily. excited to you be back. You are, aren't you? Look at you. God, it's so good to be back Revving here. Revving on Teams the start back together. Like, you might have even watched a game of rugby. Yeah. Is that excited? I'm really into rugby this season. You know, you know when you... you, know when you Hold you, that thought. You know when you go... You know, through games and you're watching a game and yeah. then suddenly there's a message from Hask on the actual WhatsApp group with a video going, of him DJ. oh my god we're gonna... <laughs> and it wasn't him DJ. it was yeah. him actually talking about yeah. rugby I, I almost felt yeah. we're back together we're not going to do too much holiday chat because this feels a little bit like a crisis meeting at the moment so we have sent for none other than the governor a man who knows a thing or two about a thing or two Lawrence Bruno Nero Delalio. how are you? thank you for having me have you got it's your nice boots? You. are you Hask... available? oh god can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, it's. Uh, I saw it's, him play in the prison thing. You ain't what you used to. Yeah, do, no, right? you're right. I'm not. I neither should I be. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Bring me in for the team tour. That'll work. Yeah. Good about that. I have totted up. I think it's seven World Cups between the three of you, covering the greatest moment and one or two yeah. at the other end. You of the know spectrum. about real bad World Cups. I'm your man. I'm overqualified. <laughs> what are you doing right here, right now? Well, for I mean, England. Well, uh, well, obviously, I've been advising them because 2003 they won it. Right, 2007. I got, I got uh, all the way down to the last game and, and got booted out. 2011 described as the worst English touring side in English sporting history. That's all sports. Good time there. 2015 <laughs> couldn't get out of the pool, couldn't get out of the pool, pool stage of their own home World Cup. 2019 I retired three months before it. So right. basically uh, awful. No wonder you're a DJ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Life's about timing. Yeah. You're clearly mad at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's get straight into it. Um, firstly, kudos to Fiji. That was something very special. Um, we're going to come on to the bigger context a little bit later on, but I w I'm going to come to you first of all, Lowell. England at Rugby World Cup 2023. Is this a write-off already, or is it salvageable from here? Well, I didn't think that England were going to win the World Cup before the warm-up games. I'm, I'm even more confident about that now. <laughs> um, the, the key question is, um, is this the, the all-time low, or, or have we still got a little bit further to go? Because, you know, we are, we are on the right side of the draw in terms of everyone was thinking, well, if, if we pull out a few good performances, we could end up in a quarter final, could easily be in a semi final. But, you know, my concern now is about beating Argentina and about beating Japan because those two teams are, you know, pretty well organised, Argentina particularly. So, you know, my expectations have gone right the way down to never mind the knockout stages, let's just worry about getting out of the group because it's been horrendous. I mean, I, I didn't watch the Fiji game, thankfully. Um, and obviously half the stadium decided not to watch it again, which tells you everything you need to know about the England team. Um, but we've we've lost three of our four warm-up games. And, you know, the players have to own it. You can, it's not This is not a media assassination on the squad. You know, as a player, we've all been there. You need to own your own performances. We were quite fortunate to win the game against Wales at, at Twickenham as well. So I, I can't remember any England side, any England side going into World Cup with such little expectation. Now, maybe that'll be a good thing because people will write us off, opponents will underestimate us, and there is some amazingly good, talented players in that group. But for whatever reason, they're not producing at the moment. Penny, for your thoughts. Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that no one else is doing. I'm going to flip it around, be positive, because yeah. we always say there's enough negativity in this world. Yes, their biggest issue is in the 22. Visits to the 22 are high. They don't score points. But the organisation, that first the first half, they should have been way further ahead. You know, you go from one side, you score very easily in a corner, offer, you know, giving Johnny May a one on one, and and he skins the guy and scores in corner. And next time, you immediately go to your driving mall, gets held up. You go back to your driving mall. Yes, you had they had positivity with it in terms of they were making advances, but got held up a couple of times. Whereas, you know, March and then scores in the second half by just going to an edge. And I just felt that. You know, they stick to where they need to improve. It's just in the 20, they kick too many ball away still. Every every chance that they get to kick the ball away, they do in the 22. George Ford is a culprit for that. One of them got charged down, they ends up going down the field to get a penalty, and then suddenly they're defending in their own half. Whereas it's, it seems to, you know, Ellis has said numerous times when he comes on, and oh, we know that after three phases, there's a good chance you'll give a penalty away. Well, resource the ball better and you won't. You know, they kept the ball for 10, 12 phases in, in, in their 22. That is just pressure. And then I think they, you, know, you can always say whether you go for posts when you get penalties in 22 or whether you're not. I would always go build a score, but they did score. You know, March had scored off the back of not, of not taking points. But that's where their main issue is. I thought in the first half, they exited very well. They got to compete and they played 
Fiji well. All Fiji's cr- tries were pretty much snapshot. The one good, tr- the one good try they created was disallowed for a forward pass. Johnny May just sat off Ravatamanda too much and gave him too much respect. But Tins, Tins, I don't, want, I don't, I don't want to be negative, but this is Fiji we're talking about. They do, uh, yeah. And they, yeah, they're a good side. This England team has been in decline since Yokohama. I mean, yeah, yeah. there no, is I'm no not, doubt not, about I'm, that. We've 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 finished. We've won two out of five games in in every Six Nations. I'm not. Since I'm not arguing where we are. I mean, we won I, four I, games in thirteen this at year. Say, at the I mean, same time, last week Fiji pushed France France yeah, closed. Yeah. So this isn't a bad Fiji team. You look at the ten now that stepped up. Months is it? Yeah. yeah. You know, Fiji never used to have people who could organise a game and manage manage their. You look at their scrum. Did they edge the scrum? They were very close. They were rock solid every single scrum. I think they did edge the scrum, yeah. Is is it salvageable from here? Are you have you seen a game plan and? I mean, I, I what I, progress, th- what I think it thing. is is it, it's an actual. It's reaffirmed people's expectations of where we are. Yeah. Right? Has, has it reaffirmed I, them, or has it lowered them? As I don't think it's saying? lowered them. I think I don't think it's lowered them. I think it's where we've probably known it's been for a, for a while, and that has come off the back of 2019 and the way that they've tried to play. What they should be looking at in Fiji is like when they actually give some air on the ball and play with the speed of ball. There's still too much slowing down. I thought Alec, I thought Mitchell did a very good job of upping the pace, and then with Danny Kerr coming up, it stayed up there. But then it's what they do in certain areas. They are dictated to by a game plan where they always have to have someone up front and play behind, rather than when you get quick ball, everyone just plays in front. And they just get the ball out to the space as quickly as possible. They miss numerous opportunities because they have to set it up and go behind people. And if they'd have gone behind, Fiji were in disarray. It's just, it's a little bit of loose, they need to loosen what they're doing. It is very structured and very rigid. And we have we saw on the Saturday, you know, we heard loads about seven hours since the back had scored a try. Yet we get, when we give them the ball, they scored two, three or whatever it was. So it's actually believing in the players that you've got around and giving them the freedom. Just go and play. If you get fast ball, play up in front and just just actually enjoy attacking. Whereas it looks like they're they're too structured. Lots of detail from Tins. I remember in, in the tail end of Eddie Jones' tenure, you were always saying, England, they're not that far away. They're one or two percent off. It's not going to take too much for it to click and come back. How far off the pace are this team right here, right now, heading into the World Look, Cup? It, for, okay, I, just in a sort of, as an aside, I think, especially in, in the way we do things in, in, in this country, if, unless you have like a very vehement opinion and, and it's kind of quite forthright and often critical, you, you seem to not be given a good. Um, account of yourself. You know, I get I get heat on, on online from everyone all the time. Say, oh, you just fucking, you know, you say this. You, you know, you're not not saying how it is. I should have said Eddie Jones was shit. I should be saying that Steve Wall thinks shit and needs to be fired. Owen Farrell should be banned for life. I just not like that. I'm not that kind of person. I think you can you can look at things in a much more pragmatic, com- commonsensical way. Where you, I'm not a diehard fan, so I don't have that emotional attachment to it. I think England. What's disappointing for me is there's obviously quality, as Lawrence says, it, across that board. They haven't suddenly become bad players overnight. You know, some of those guys... But they're, they're very good players in club shirts, yes, but in England shirts... They haven't they haven't got that right. I think yet. I think at the moment, some of the disappointing stuff for me would be much more the defensive element, you know, where you, you know, if you look at this team... 27 one, tackles they missed against Fiji, and that, that's just individual one-on-one tackles. And that for me, that for me is, that for me is an issue because one of the things that England... Whether you want to advance the game and play this very progressive game of rugby and throw it around, one of the things that, that England has always consistently had was power game, was physicality, was directness, was intimidation, was if you knew you were going to play England, you might not get the most um, attractive rugby, but you were going to get filled in. I don't see at the moment that ruthless edge. I think the players are trying. And I think players are working hard. I don't fault any of that. I just don't see that emotion, emotion yet at the moment or that ability to cross it. Actually, nothing's happened yet. We haven't even entered the World Cup. So, Wilmot Games, you win nothing for. So, do I do I blindly go into it with faith that England will win the World Cup? No. Do I think that nothing's been done yet and can we have a good opportunity to go in there and start and fresh and have we been written off? Yes. Do they need to drastically change what they're doing in terms of um, some of the emotional drivers, I think, yes. Lawrence, you know, in, in the lock-in talked about, you got to have your head in your heart, right? I don't see a lot of that at the moment. I don't question the boys' determination work. I don't question what the coaches are, are trying to do. I just think at the moment, we're, we're off probably by 15%. And I think actually we could we could get tweaked some of those things. And actually, if you made some of the emotional changes, you'd probably see better results, I think. It's a pretty tough game of rugby. Uh, rugby's hard. It's a very technical game. If each player is making two or three unforced errors in a game, you add those up, you've you got no chance of winning any game of rugby, no matter how good you scrum, you line out your set pieces. So why are they making those mistakes? Is it is it trying too hard? Possibly. Is it a little bit of nerves? Is it a little bit of pressure? Probably a mixture of all of those things. The players need to own their performance 
you know, Steve, we've heard from Steve Borthwick, it's never nice as a coach. We've all lost games of rugby. You've got to come out, you've got to front it up. You know, we're very disappointed, change your room. I get all that. The players need to own it. All right. If you play that badly, and let's be honest, it was bad. Okay, whichever way we dress it up, it was poor. And they have been playing poorly for quite some time. Don't send Steve Borthwick out there to own it. Get out there and own it yourself. Apologize to the nation, which is the number one thing you do. Very sorry for that performance. It wasn't up to the standards you expect or we expect. It will be put right and we will come back stronger. I want to hear that from Ellis Genge. What I don't want to hear, and I, lo I love these players, don't get me wrong, They're, him and Joe Marler, two of my favourite players, I don't want to see tweets. They've almost gone into this siege mentality of thinking that the media, the public are criticising them wrongly. Own it, guys, because if you own it, then you're the ones that can do something about it. Don't expect Steve Borthwick in a short space of time to suddenly give you all the answers. There's so much experience in that squad. And yes, of course, they missed Owen Farrell and they missed you know, some of their more experienced players. But they've got players who have won everything there is to win in the game. They've been to a World Cup final. Don't hide behind the coaches. You know, the RFU withdrew all the players from any media. That is not the thing to no. do. Yeah. You know, there is... If you if we had a net promoter score between England and the fans, I think the net promoter score is at an all time low yeah. because no one no one even knows who's playing week well, to week. I, I I said that you know when we talked this before and I, look you know I you know I like um, Eddie but I, I, I'm not an idiot. I, I always felt though that you know, the coach especially in this coach, get get hammered first when the, when the players as Lawrence says are the ones that go on the field. You know and I think I think everything you said there is pressure. There is probably forcing, you know, in warm-up games, you're trying your hardest to get selected. So that first game against Wales where you drop the ball every five minutes because you, you're just trying your best, you're just trying to force things. And the mentality, especially in this country, is if things aren't going well, just work harder. And that doesn't solve shit. That just makes things... They're, the players are confused. But, yeah. I know, sorry, Tim. The players are confused. What, what we thought Steve Borthwick and what he will bring and what everyone says he brings is clarity. You know, he's very clear about roles, responsibilities. This is not Steve Borthwick's problem overnight. This is something that has been passed on to him. He's inherited a squad that are so confused that they don't know which direction to go in. Eddie Jones, great coach, but he had 23 assistant coaches in the five or six years that he was there. So I think two or three weeks, there's a new coach coming in with a different message and players having to take that on board. For me, they look like a very confused group of people and it's going to take Steve Borthwick longer than this World Cup to, to declutter and deconfuse them and give them that clarity that clearly he can bring. The one thing I, I do find hard is that it wasn't good but I think where where people I think get upset is that is the question of the, the question of the players not not trying or not caring. That for me I think is very hard because you can't say that none of them cared. I just don't think they. But we don't hear from them. No, we don't know whether fault. they care or not. We, we only see tweets. We spoke that to Bill Sweeney. Siege mentality. We spoke to Bill Sweeney, and I said the biggest thing with 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 England rugby at the moment and that whole general setup is the players. You know they're not they're not put out there. They're told what to say, mm. and there's no personality, and there's no. But they have all got personalities, and they would all say things, and they'd all be honest, but they're to consistently cajoled and there's so much panic and fear over saying the wrong thing or doing something you know each individually c cares and I, you can see yeah, you can see why they tweeted because and you can see why they tweeted because you know people online are just so vile yeah. and it becomes such a personal yeah. affront head of you, media maybe that could be a role <coughs> for well, you I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, not, but, but you go to you go to the like NBA and there's I can't remember the name of the basketball player who they lost in the, the semi-finals or, uh, and they, they were like oh is this is this season now a failure yeah. And he's like, hang on. So if you write a bad article, is that do you see your whole your whole job as a failure? We've worked to something for a whole and it doesn't work that way, yeah. but you need to hear it from the players. And I do agree with this, is the fact that there are characters who are strong enough, but you only get stronger by facing up and fronting up and being and being realistic about it. And they would all do it, but this is in something that Eddie's you, built because yeah. he thought he had a It's very a disappointing, wasn't it? For yeah. Courtney Laws, who is one of England's star players and And played well and played well and and even played well against Wales before. But if if he's making his hundredth, you know, appearance for England and you lose to Fiji. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that in itself... I, I, I mean, that's I mean, I mean, not I don't, top I, tier I, open. I don't understand how that works because no. if I really like Courtney and I want to play well for him, I'm going to make sure we go out there and yeah. win because... And then afterwards, not one player came out and, and said, I'd like to... Never mind, oh, congratulations to Courtney. I'd like to apologise to him yeah. for letting him down on the biggest game of his... One of the biggest games of his career in front of half the nation. 
I mean, I don't get it. Players need to own and, and be responsible for their own performances. I don't, allow, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, nothing I've seen, and especially when I was in there, was about, you know, we go into the media and they give me a sheet and I just tell them to go away. Yeah. And they say, you can't say this, you can't do this, don't do this. I'd be like, no, no, no. No, I, because I, Eddie, Eddie's controlled that situation yeah. for the last three years. So there, there, there is no pathway. And that, that needs to change because in order for a team to move on and progress, they need to take ownership and responsibility for what's happening on the field and off the field. And I was just going to very quickly add, as the complete counterpoint to that, now we've, we were messaging yeah. all last week about, you, you messaged Bill Sweeney, yeah. we'd like to have a chat with Owen, yeah. we want to hear Owen's side of the story. Johnny Sexton yesterday at the Ireland announcement held his hands up and said, I got it horribly wrong, in a suit, at the Leinster um, La Rochelle European Cup final, I was emotional, I apologised immediately, I knew I'd got it wrong, I'm really sorry. Yeah. He owned it, it's put to bed. People uh, won't be talking about Johnny Sexton now and whether he should or shouldn't be banned. He's said he's sorry, we move on. Whereas the Owen thing, we, we haven't heard from the England captain at any point in the build-up to Rugby World Cup 2023. Compare that to Ben Stokes, who is yeah. out in the media doing fabulous interviews with Mike Atherton, et cetera, et cetera. I it is a closed shop, which is hard to, to get purchased and buy into. I think silence. People fill the void of silence. Exactly. If you don't speak, people yeah. will fill it with what they think is happening. Well, what this they is old-school old media management in the fact that you think if you don't say anything, it'll, no, it'll roll no. over and it'll go away. Whereas at the moment, that's not how the media works. It just it, Actually, they'll find stuff to continue fueling the fire until you I actually... Mean, I mean, interestingly, so England arrive... At the start of the tournament, played for, lost three, won one just. Their, 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 their captain and star player and talisman banned. Their number eight banned. I mean, you know, it, it's not in great shape, right? Let's be honest, you can't dress it up any other yeah. way, okay? But we've, there, there is still a World Cup to play, okay? And somehow between now and the Argentina game, they've got to have those honest conversations as a group, whichever players are, are selected, and they've got to make sure, because bear in mind, it doesn't need me to tell you there is history between the two countries and not just in rugby. And they will come out and they will fancy their chances. Especially with Michael Checker at the, at the helm Absolutely. and the way he is. I mean, I mean, this is about getting your head and your heart in the right place just to beat Argentina. And this is a team that this, Eng this England side lost to Argentina last season at Twickenham. All right, we all remember it. Yeah. So there should be the hunger, the motivation, the desire, regardless of what's just happened, for us to beat this side. Now, if they come out and beat Argentina, which they're very capable of doing, then suddenly, the narrative changes and the players are suddenly getting that confidence back. And when they get that confidence back, there is some very, very talented players in that group. I'd say being a bit closer to this group than, than these lads, I can I can reassure everybody, whether that whether they've come out and media or owned it, that each one of them cares yeah. incredibly, yeah. Uh, an incredible amount about representing the country. No one will be as hurting as much as them. Fans think they have a monopoly on being upset. Nothing, nothing hurts you more, or no one is hurt more than a player. And they will work their socks off and do everything they can do, and I think they will be able to have those honest conversations and put their hands up and will be disappointed. And I, you know, and, I, and as long as I felt for, for Courtney, because you know he's truly a world class player, he deserved a better day there. But I think the good news is none of this matters if they if they go in there and, that, and win that first game. As Lowell says, nothing's happened, nothing's on the table at the moment. It is all to play for. So without blind optimism, I do think that they can turn things around. And I actually think with the players and with a few tweaks and a few bits, they, they can they can do well. I don't think they'll win it, but I think they can do well. The uh, few players that I've spoke to are in camp. So the actual in camp atmosphere, because you hear other rumours yeah. about it's not right, it's not this and that, but the, you know, they actually say it's, the atmosphere in there is good and the, the confidence, or well, not confidence, but the attitude to everything is, is really positive. But I, I do think that, so, I, so I think it's one of these things where if that is the truth in camp and they are in a good place, they're one win away from maybe a complete change of performance. They, they look nervous at the moment when they're out there. They look like they know that performance, which then leads to more mistakes. So I do think a good performance could completely shift it. But from what you've seen in these uh, four games that we've played, yeah. you, uh, where's that coming the, the from? Prob the problem we've got now is that the, the hardest part of any game is attack. Okay, and it's the most of it's the part of the game that sides probably spend the least amount on. Well, certainly England, and it's very evident because we've only scored a, a few tries and we've conceded bucket loads. Now, the questions that Steve and his coaching group will be saying is, well, where do we if we split up the training schedule into sections? What do we spend most of our time on? Because defence needs needs sorting. You know, we're missing too many one-on-one -on -one tackles, and structurally, we're getting beaten on the outside by Fiji too many times. So that needs work. Our line-out 
a scrum, Steve just passionately will always work on that. Yeah. But actually, our attack is the area that needs the most work. But I can guarantee it's the one that they probably won't spend their time on. So for this World Cup, I don't expect England to light it up. Um, you know, it's 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 but, about. But then then you've also you can flip it around a little bit. Someone like Fiji, if they can keep the, if they can keep the ball, if they give the if they kick the ball away, thirty three times to kick the ball away on the weekend compared to Fiji, it was twenty three. If they keep giving the opposition that ball yeah. and easy out, then you're going to have to defend better. Or if you can actually work on keeping but, the ball. But Steve would tell you that they, the Leicester won the title by kicking the ball away. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, and he's got this, and there's an South obsession. South Africa won a World Cup. Mean, there, there is a view. But has the game a, not moved on? I agree. I think, I think, I think, I think, actually, I thought Danny Cipriani, he, he said something very interesting in, 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 for the first time ever. I'm joking. Um, said something very interesting in, in the article in the paper because he's quite astute. He said about kind of, you know, being overcoached, not playing what's in front of you and, and, you know, basing so much on statistics and what you think you should do instead of going, we've got Tins Said. Most of New when I watched New Zealand play, and I was certainly out there playing in, in, in for the Highlanders, I couldn't understand why they were such good highlights. Most of the time, it went through the hands because you got back, they got forwards who can pass the ball really well, and they'd score in the corner. And it was like there's no rocket sciences. There wasn't like triple triple switches or kicks. They just played to space. England played to space, scored, and it's not as complicated as you you would think it would be. I just think it, it's those. It's that kind of stuff that I, I yeah, can just Are they trying too hard to implement what is on a yes. piece of paper yes. as they run out? Yes. Right. Because, because it, it, loads of, well, pretty much most teams will play with that sort of structure, two in, one behind. But if you get fast ball, you don't need to spin that off. Yeah. You don't need to do it. So, you just so, need... so the question then is, how easy is it for England to almost take their eyes off the page and onto the pitch well, in the need, next 10 players days? Players need to own it in the sense that if you... Yeah, if need you need to understand you, it. You need to understand that if I'm in the back row and James has been there... If you're giving away more than one or two penalties a game, you, you know that's that, you add that up. That is a lot. Yeah. I mean, the number of penalties we gave away. In the, so individual ownership of your discipline is is paramount. Uh, you know, from Owen Farrell, Courtney Laws, right the way down to to every member of the team. The basic mistakes, unforced errors. Now these are world class players who are just dropping the ball or or you know just doing stupid things. Eradicate those two things. Okay, discipline. Basic one-on-one -on -one tackles, defense, and and not making mistakes. Then suddenly you've got a basis on which you can play. You had you had 2003 where we, we, we talked about in the lock-in about uh, the perfect match of a coach that was uh, had innovation and a, and a coaching and a, and a senior players group that said yes or no yeah. and had trust. You you had in you know but both of you had in 2007 we had a revolt basically because you know I mean I, I was in part of the warm-up games with Brian Ash spent eight about weeks Fra doing France in 2011 2011 yeah. they did they, they sat their coach do you think do you think we're not without I'm not saying that you go against but but now that we're going into the tournament the players just sat down and went right listen we, we we've got to play for ourselves here because they're the ones out in the field yeah the I question. don't think I don't think this squad are, I, listen you guys are closer to them I don't think they're at that I mean that Steve brings clarity fine okay but they need to take that. And they need to, you know, make sure that they are they're, they're seriously experienced players, yeah. and they need to, you know, to be able to uh, add what they think is the right way. Yeah, to I play. didn't mean a revolt. What I meant was just didn't that. They feel that... the most experienced England yeah, team of all yeah. time against uh, against Wales in the second game. Yeah. Or was well, it it's the most Cups. experienced Iron England game. World Cup well, squad. If I'm, all if time, I'm Owen Farrell, won't play in the Argentina game, but whoever plays, you know, we have to win that game. Simple yeah. as. I mean, you know, we if we don't win that game, our World Cup will go. For, you know, we'll, we'll spiral well, I don't, out. Of I don't, control. Yeah, been, so no, we have to win that game. They are a very talented side. Okay, but I'm sure Steve Borthwick now is focusing purely on that. But the players who go out there need to find the right emotional connection because there is a whole load of pain coming at them in that game. Let me tell yeah. you. Well, and if they get stuck in structure. Yeah, and they're running into brick walls. Oh, that's Argentina's game. Yeah. They yeah. need to change the mold. What would you do, like? Cause I'm interested what you lads would do because obviously, in, with the advent of social media, I mean, it was around kind of 2003 was quite, quite quietish. 2007 yeah. was more. You know, we, we fast forward to, to 23. They're getting hammered from all sides. Yeah. Uh, it's 24 hour news. They're getting bombarded. Uh, you know, back in the day, if you didn't want to read the papers, you didn't have to. But yeah. stuff will filter in. What do you What do you do now? Because you see that it's like Joe Joe and, and Ellis. I think yeah. because how how vicious people are, they felt like that's putting tweets out was the right thing to do I think if they were able to well, that's speak, the only way they can that's the only way they can do it what do you do now to, to, to stay positive in that camera what do you do because I don't know it's a great question yeah because I, I don't know what you, yeah. this, how do you <coughs> how do you turn well, the tide yeah. I, I don't think I don't think you can suddenly flip it around you ha as Lowell said earlier you have to front it yeah. you have to own it the players you have to like yeah. you the have players, to say the players, I mean if I was yeah. a coach and I'm not but if I was I'd get the senior group around me um, and they're the ones that need to and they go out they, every they're, press they're the ones that need to go out and be positive yeah. in, in, in the camp and outside they need to take ownership of it you can't hide behind the fact we won four games in 13 this year yeah. you can't hide behind the fact the performances individually and collectively have been oh, poor yeah. 
okay, whatever standards, whoever you're playing against, take ownership of it, accept it, because things will get better. And so I'm probably bringing a couple of people from externally to give them a bit of a lift. Um, I mean, they haven't got much time, so, you know, to get, to, you know, so, you know, there's limited time on the training field. So or bust out of strippers or something like that. <laughs> or, <laughs> no, 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 we're talking about... Oh, coach, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That, yeah. Long, long sorry. that would definitely raise morale. I'd like, well, yeah, be, exactly. be real happy about that. moved on. <laughs> no, I think the players, ultimately, the senior players, the reason why we eventually became successful is because the trust between the coaches and the senior management the senior players was there and we would disseminate that through the rest of the squad. So I think there is still time. Yeah. Um, they, they, need to, they need to get rid of this notion that the coach is there to protect the players yeah. Yeah. and to yeah. take the flack. It's, it's not I mean, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall on the, on the Monday after that Fiji game. You were well, yesterday, wasn't it, yeah. really? And say, uh, would you like to explain what you were doing? Because it doesn't look like you've got to call each other out. You yeah. know, you've got to call each other not not publicly, but behind closed doors, and accept that. But I think they do. You know what? I, I, I know that, especially. I know obviously Owen wasn't a player, but having been, I know that there is a real level of honesty, and I think I think something like again, I think because of the void, you think that they wouldn't do that. I know how harsh they would be because having sat with those guys, I know that they would sit through meetings and they're going to be harsh. And I know, I feel sorry for Borthers as well because we talked about it when he was announced. I said, what's really interesting is Eddie ha has a very charismatic personality and just pulls grenades out on what left, right and centre. I always felt bad when Borthers was captain of England. I remember we, we wheeled him out, we played against Scotland and we drew and he said something positive, like said, oh, I was very proud of the lads. And everyone was like, you're fucking deluded. You know what you're talking they about? Need a, they need a team manager who's going to say, Owen, you need to yes. get in front of the cameras. Courtney, it's your yeah. turn now. Joe, you know, you played because Borthers ain't Hilda, Borthers never that. Should Hilda not, no, but it's no, not. That's not. No, his but job, Borthers, but not Borthers his job, ain't but... the man. You know, like, but that's the thing. I was always interested. I knew that if things didn't go well, the tide would turn. Borthers isn't the, like the media man. Like I love him. He, it's just but not his. It's not his be, forte. He should never be. Hilda. So, no. so let's so so let's just uh, just so we're clear, we're, we're disappointed. Yeah. But I will always back my team. Okay. At the World Cup, yeah. you know, we failed our mocks spectacularly, but yeah. we, but the, the but the exams are just about to yeah. be sat. And if we win against Argentina, there's a very different narrative. I will always back the team, I'll back the players, but this is not something that's going to change overnight. There are some changes that need to be made at the very top of the RFU all the way through to make this England team successful. I yeah. think that's a show for another day, but I, and, I, I, yeah, I know, and that could be yeah. a yeah. series but, of shows. Actually. But I I agree. I think there there have been positives in all the games. They need to focus on those with, but then also have the realism about what's not quite right. I know you talk about missed tackles. South Africa missed 40 tackles against New Zealand. So it's not always the case of how stats work out. That's the beauty of stats. But they need to pick up... The, the problem is, is their individual errors cost them massive. Yeah. Uh, and that is the, is the difference of where they are now. Look, I think there's light. I think there's, there's, good, there's good players in this team. It needs a momentous game against Argentina to flip it around and then they're, they're, no one, the expectation is zero so that's, that's just go out there and, and live it live it like it's zero because I think it'll actually benefit them as a team I mean it's a bit like a plot of a, like a Ted Lasso thing but actually yeah. the beauty of sport is you, you on, on a dime I know you say you can't fundamentally or systemically can change but the beauty of sport you know the Al Pacino speak, it is a game of inches it it can with some positivity and mindset why is it when sport when you have a guaranteed certain winning team that's going to beat beat somebody and they get beaten I think all the elements are there it's not like we're, we're, there's like a group of every men there's good coaches good players all with the right mentality but actually it's not clicking but Finally, I think, we're, we're agreed we're yeah, going to win agreed. the World Cup <laughs> yeah, right, we're, we're back on track, track. we've Look, got there yeah. in the end thank yeah. God for that right i tell you what we're going to do just as a quick interlude to this we are going to bring in our BA High Flyers of the Week segment. It's a little tough, I think, this week. I'm getting flavours of Joe Launchbury as man of the match as England crashed out to Australia in the World Cup in 2015. Do you remember that? Yes, I do, yes. That was not a pretty moment for, no. for sponsors or for Joe. Um, however, we are obviously doing all things British Airways, great friends of the show. We are looking at our High Flyer of the Week segment. I'm going to throw out a couple for you. Ellis gave it everything. Courtney 100 caps, Marcus Smith. Richard Smith KC, potentially. <laughs> Unbelievable. Other one I was going to throw in, we, we don't often pack the backs of referees, but Luke Pierce in France, Australia. Where would you chuck your high flyer of the week? Yeah, look, just on Luke Pierce, thought he did a fantastic job. I think it makes it... Uh, it's so much better when someone's bilingual and yeah. they can explain it all the way. If I went down the England route, I thought Courtney, even though... We lost, had a fantastic 100th cap. Uh, I thought he swept up a lot in in defence. He carried, he carried well. I thought, you know, Ben Earl, we, we've asked about another eight. I thought, again, he sort of backed that up with some great carries off the back of it. Um, 
I thought Mitchell played well in the terms of the speed that he, he played the ball with. Um, where do we want to go? Who's your high flyer? Look, I, I think I'm... Unfortunately, where we're at, at the moment, you you can't reward mediocrity. Even those individual guys did did very well. I think it's a shame for Courtney because I think he's truly world class and he probably deserved a better hundred cap. And it, and it probably be a bit of a tainted memory, even though getting hundred caps is an amazing achievement itself. I go for Luke Pierce. We referees get a lot of heat at the moment. There aren't a lot. You know, there have been a lot, not a lot of positivities because of so many red cards and bits of pieces. He he refereed very well. Bilingual. Um, they deserve a, a pep up. They're, they're good people. They're good men, and they deserve to be celebrated. So I would give nice. a British BA High Flyer Award. Well done to Luke Pierce. Thank you, British Airways, who have brought original people, places, and cultures closer together for more than a hundred years. And let's hope that we are banging the High Flyers drum of England a little louder from here on into the tournament. Uh, well done, Luke. I tell you the other thing I very quickly want to do as well is it's just a reminder for those of you who love the sport that a couple of days after the Rugby World Cup final, we are heading out as GBNR across the UK on a theatre tour for the ages. We are going to be raising a glass to the winners. We will be drowning our sorrows for the losers. There will be a whole host of chaos in between. So if you fancy a night out to reward or reignite your love of the game, then buy a ticket for your husband, mother, sister or brother, boyfriend, boss, girlfriend or coach. And if they have been doing nothing but grumbling about England, their rugby, the pre-season or their sub-rises, dip into your kitty, buy them an early Christmas present and we promise you a really fun night. Tins, where are we going? I will answer the question for you. <laughs> I can tell you where we're going. We are going to. We're going to Guildford, London, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Northampton, Reading, Oxford, Leicester, Birmingham, Westcliff on Sea, Exeter, Plymouth, Newcastle, Nottingham, Manchester, and Bath. If you want to buy tickets, head to cuffandtaylor.com or type in Good Bad Rugby Tour. We'd love to see you there. I promise you a really fun night out. We've got special guests to announce. Um, and I promise you that if you love your rugby, we will. And just use a caveat time. as well it's, it's about fun and enjoyment. And it's not about dissecting uh, the intricacies of rugby. If you know nothing about rugby, I promise to God you will come and you'll be entertained. And it's probably a good thing you know nothing about it because neither do we. And also, it's probably 18 rated. So oh, yeah. Yes. For mums and dads, kids, don't like bring your eight-year-olds yeah, or don't, 11-year-olds. Do not bring your kids. Or and if, if you do, bring very good earbuds. And if you like to complain because you feel like you're making a profound difference to the world, don't come. Buy a ticket, but just don't come. Thank right. you. Okay. Look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sort of slightly lift... English supporters' eyes just from the problems that we've seen at Twickenham and in Dublin over the last few weeks and just look at the whole of the tournament because it's probably fair to say we are going into a World Cup now where we've got more potential winners, genuine teams going into the tournament who think that they are going to win it. France, Ireland, South Africa, definitely. New Zealand, New Zealand. it's in their DNA. You've got real teams with proper punchers' chances. Well, you know, Scotland could be in there. That's what I'm saying. More, more upsets, definitely. Yeah. More um, upsets. You know, more, I mean, the Tier 2 performances in the last World Cup were significantly better. Yes. I think what we've seen in the build-up to this World Cup is that they've improved again. England yes. have just lost to Fiji. You know, Tonga, Samoa, Samoa, be Wales. Yeah. Samoa, Georgia Samoa be Wales. ran Ireland very, very close. Yeah. Yep. Georgia, and so, Georgia therefore, were winning at half-time against are, Scotland. They will be, this will be a different World Cup. Yeah. Yes. For lot, so, the, you know, can you know can Tonga cause an upset? Can Samoa cause an upset? Yes, can Fiji yeah. cause an upset? You know, well, you said I mean Fiji are now the highest ranked team in Pool Seventh, C. Right? They are higher than both Australia yeah. and Wales. Yeah. And, and so I suppose the question is what and, and it, almost yeah. But in terms of the tournament that we're going into, I mean England fans are in despair because we've lost to Fiji. But are we seeing a narrative now that is? Very different to what was 15, 20 years ago, where yeah. England yeah. would expect to make a semi final 20 years ago because yeah. they were the best funded. We have now got World Rugby pat on the back, putting 40 million quid into funding these tier two yeah. nations. We have got proper coaches. Dave Rennie is a consultant now. Yeah. Well, also, the, el the eligibility of, yeah. of players has Fli exactly. flipped it. I mean, yeah. you look at the Tongan team and you go, yeah. mm, that's. And also the exposure. So many people are playing in Europe, playing all over the place, coming to the Premiership. They, you know, they've got the, the, the uh, Rugby Championship. Truer you know? in Super Rugby. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, that, all that kind of stuff I think is completely changed. I don't think. You know, I think there's a couple of teams that someone's like Chile without, um, but I think Craig White, I think, might be working with Chile as well. And he, you yeah, know, he pulled out that, you know, that winning of Uruguay yeah. against Fiji. He's a genius for a man talking about kind of motivating and getting men to, to own their kind of masculinity and performance. So I think, apart from Chile, who don't necessarily have the experience, uh, um, you know, there's no team I don't think that on the day can't, can't cause an upset. And I think that's the positive thing about rugby. And I think it's kind of sad that we're obviously. All, all ex England players and England fans that everything you know sets and rises with the England team. When this World Cup is going to be one of the most exciting, uh, amazing adventures in France with a French team that are the team to beat, 
with South Africa, the, 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 the champions, can they back it up again when they've just absolutely dismantled New Zealand with a record score at Twickenham? I think there's so much to be positive about. Yeah. I, I think almost like England is like a byproduct. It's like sweet, we'd all like to do well, but who gives a shit? Yeah, that's, there's that's so the way, much that's the way everyone who doesn't live in England, who is a non England fan, believes. But just to bring it back to reality, there's been nine Rugby World Cups since 1987, and six have been won by South Africa and New Zealand. So we can talk about how you know, tier two nation is going to do better and they will. We could talk about France having a great chance as hosts if they can cope with seeing themselves on billboards all around the country. <laughs> we can talk about Ireland with or without Johnny Sexton. New Zealand and South Africa are still the two teams to beat. Six, I don't know, two thirds of all Rugby World mm -hmm. Cups have been won by those two. And only a third of all Rugby World Cups have been won by the host nation. So France can do it, yeah. but it's a tough assignment. But what an adventure. But I just think as well, like every time you go, I was, I was convinced that New Zealand after they lost those back-to-back -back games and, and everyone said, you know, Foster, get rid of Foster. They were, no, they were no good, that they were going to come back and smash it. Then to get pumped like they did against South Africa, I thought South Africa, were they a bit, you know, because they got beaten before, what, have they lost it a little bit? Were they? And now you're just like, this whole Seven narrative. Split. Yeah, this whole landscape yeah. is completely changing. I'm like, I think there's so much to be excited about. And now you look at Samoa. You know, with with Lima Sapawanga playing and all those boys transferring across. I think you mentioned Alex. I mean, Scotland. You know, they are a very dangerous team. They, they've beaten England three out of the last four. They could beat South Africa in that opening game, mm, and could. then suddenly it blows it wide open. <laughs> yeah. What happens if France lose their first games in New Zealand? Yeah. The All Blacks are suddenly back. And Everyone in France is now you know, doubting themselves a little yeah. bit. Well, it's a, a brave, brave turn as well. Brave call to take that game as the first game. You know, I didn't realise yeah. that they actually chose to pick that game. Yeah, they yeah. chose to do that. I didn't know that. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, that they have. Told us. Yeah. I love that they have, but it's a, yeah, it's a ballsy call because if you didn't go quite go right. You've got Ireland as the number one side yeah. in the world uh, scrambling past Samoa. Suddenly, you know, Scotland with their tails up and picking up speed. Oh. South Africa have set the benchmark coming into the where tournament. Where did France go? After? I know that was before France played Australia on Sunday. So where did France go back up to after Sunday? They're up to third off the back of that win over Australia. Oh, yeah, I mean, right. listen, Ireland is still a, a, a wonderful side. We've been there before. Going into a World Cup as Grand Slam champions, which we were, Ireland are as well, being the number one side for the first time in their history, can they cope with the pressure? That yeah. all that brings because every press conference is a very different press conference well, when you're the number and, one side. and they've got to live on the the pressure of every single what media does every time every single one will revert back to the fact they haven't got past the quarter final. yeah and if they do get so, media, so, so that, that in is. itself is a, li is a little sort of soap opera i'm fascinated to see i'm you know obviously I have a little bit of irish in our family i'm fascinated to see how they progress in this world cup because they're an amazing squad yeah coached by andy farrell coached by mike cat two people we know very well and uh, they've got every chance if they can keep Sexton in one piece. And the other thing is that we're talking a lot about on the field here. And then you actually just take a step back and you look at what Rugby World Cups throw up. The inevitable chaos. Welcome, Hask. Players on the piss, ferry jumping, food poisoning, dwarf tossing, too many men on the field, white bait fishing, kicking with the wrong balls, bungee jumping, potentially Rassi back on a laptop, Eddie in a press conference, a Gatlin grenade. We're going to be talking about early baths, late nights, referees, bunkers, typhoons, yeah. and TMOs. Yeah. Not only are we looking at a tournament in which we've got more runners and riders and stronger tier two, and we've got we've got red cards. We're but going also, to have more than that. We had eight in 2019. We're definitely oh going to have God, more, than, more that. than that. Yeah. It, it's about who can handle the moment yeah. when everything is flying everywhere. And I just sort of wonder whether that adds a whole other dimension. You're in France, of course, where all this will happen. And they'll light a gold and have a coffee and shrug. I mean, it's yeah, it's chaos. But, but then it is going to be chaos. But that's what rugby is now. With, with how easy it is to get a red card, you're going to have to deal with you know uh, you're going to have to deal with the lows as well as you deal with the highs, and that puts a massive amount of pressure on each team in a different way. And it's how people react to that. And the the team that react the best and have are most comfortable in their own skin will probably come. I mean, through. South Africa lost, won the World Cup in Japan, but lost the first game, so they had to deal with that. They had to go away, lick their wounds, come back, and they came back much stronger. They were awful for in, every game. In two thousand three, we played pretty poorly in quite a lot yeah. of games. We were up, you know, Samoa first half, we were like, oh my God, it can't get any worse. Johnny Wilson, he's even hit the post in front of the post, yeah. um, you know, against Wales. We had moments in games where we had to, you know, get together and survive. And even the favourites, France, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, they will have moments in this tournament where things are not going their way, where suddenly everything that they look really good before the tournament started and it's all going wrong. Yeah. It's about getting through those moments and coming out on top. I think as well, you've got, um, like you said, the, the, the people bring away from the, their families, you've got the bureaucracy of world rugby and like 
rules and bits and pieces that you don't have um, normally. You know, I remember in, in kind of 2015, you weren't allowed your phones in the um, phones in the changing rooms because of betting and gambling. They changed the rules there. Certain things you can't have balls for warm. I, I'm not saying that it's this time, but you, they have all these weird things. Like we got fined in 2011 for too many Nike ticks on too many bags. Couldn't have your gum shields. We'd all be given Op Pro gum shields. Couldn't have Op Pro gum shields because you weren't allowed to have Op Pro. Shields. All your shirt numbers all, fell off. All shirt numbers fell off. All the kit got stolen on the way to New Zealand because it, it just all of this kind of madness that goes on and then you kind of have that that, that consistent traveling how do you keep the lads um, motivated I know a lot of people say it's very easy because you represent your country but for some people it can it can do them down that's why I think you have tournament sides that like Argentina notoriously always do well in World Cups because they were together consistently before they started being involved in the rugby championship you know I think there's so much emotion and, men, and actual mental stuff that's going to go on that's going to change the landscape of, you know, of rugby and that's where I slightly wonder whether it's been a disastrous build up for England but they are battle hardened in terms of the yeah. press and the chaos and you're going to have to fight your way through yeah, it there's, they, a, there, there's definite siege mentality and circling the wagons and going you know it's them against us but you've still got to look at the statistics of performance as yeah, well and true. you know and they need to sort that out first before you worry about the press yeah. yeah i think social media i think that you know it'll be interesting as well because a lot of the the, the the front page media that don't really take much of an interest in rugby suddenly start turning up to these world cups they send the writers you know like you you see the same old old boys in in you know they're only following you has no, no, yeah, yeah. and you two fucking don't point fingers at me completely you know we're all in this together lads we'll be in the, we'll Proper be in the, we'll be in the front page yeah. of newspapers do you know what i mean but the um but that's interesting you know you normally got kind of the, the written the written press they're always the same faces always the same lads you then suddenly get they, they, you know, those sign investigative journalists turn up to World Cup. You've got people, you know, looking at looking over your shoulder. That changed the dynamic. Suddenly, they're looking to catch people out, stitch people up, and I, th that throws into it as well. You know, as we, you know, we know better than anyone. <laughs> Just a quick note from our friends at NordVPN who are offering good, bad and rugby listeners an exclusive deal. If you're heading across the channel in September and want to be able to watch all your favourite TV shows and sport back home or anywhere in the world, with NordVPN, you can switch your vir virtual location to a country which is showing the event. And if you are in a foreign country with no friends, like I find myself very often weekly, I always log on to NordVPN and I really enjoy what I watch. I, actually, so, I actually used it this morning. Did you? Did you I really? did because I was trying to watch uh, the second half of South Africa New Zealand and I couldn't really find it anywhere. Then I found one in New, uh, like a New Zealand feed, so I then had to switch my. So even if you're home, you use NordVPN. Yes, what you we're can because you can set yourself. Whatever you're doing, com. whatever Nord you're VPN doing, NordVPN is the number one. Yeah. Number one. You'll, you'll even get a discount on your plan, an extra four months for, for free, and there's no risk with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpncom forward slash rugby. The link's also in the episode description box. One of the reasons that we wanted to talk to you was obviously not only about where England are right now but also about the book you've brought out. Yeah. For any nostalgic England fan, The Boys of Winter, out now in all good um, bookshops and online, etc., is, I think it's, a lot of England fans might need it right now, right? <laughs> yeah, here. well, it's a bit of a, um, a throwback to when, uh, you know, when, when times were a bit happier. Um, basically, it's 20 year anniversary, which makes us all feel very old, um, of 2003. So I thought it'd be a good idea to steal an idea, because all the best ideas are beg, borrowed and stolen. So there was a book called The Boys of Summer by Roger Kahn. Uh, talking about the Brooklyn Dodgers in the 50s that was written in the 70s and it was a 20-year reflection on what happened. So I've interviewed every single player, 31 of us, uh, that went to Sydney, quite a few of the senior management team because a lot has been said and done uh, since 2003 and what this is is 31 different versions of what actually happened and hopefully what it's done is unearthed a few nuggets of, of wisdom, of truth, of information that none of us knew about. Um, yeah. So the first part of the book looks at the nine weeks we spent in Sydney uh, and obviously culminated in that wonderful evening. Uh, and the second part of the book, which I think is equally as interesting, is was it a good thing we won and how did it change your life? <laughs> Michael made a, <laughs> Mike, Mike made, a, top of the Christmas Mike, tree? Mike made a wonderful contribution yeah. to the book. Um, and I think, uh, you know, because it means different things to different people. You know, you win a World Cup, your life does change forever. There's no doubt about that. You know, Johnny Wilkinson, who was an absolute superstar, um, the winning drop goal, it was that moment. He didn't play for England for three and a half years after that game in Sydney, which is incredible, really. Martin Johnson retired immediately afterwards. Um, you know, all of our lives changed forever. And uh, some players were able to cope with that quite well, and some weren't. You look at Steve Thompson, some of these other players. Now, we're all in a very different place. So 
hopefully people will really enjoy it. I picked out a grab because obviously it's been serialised in the Times at the moment. I picked out a, a quote from Kieran Bracken and you asked the question, was it all worth it? And Bracken responded, that's a good question. Would I do it all again? Rugby has given me too much to say I wouldn't. And we'll never know if it was the rugby that gave me the anxiety, which, which is a really sort of prominent piece of his story. Yeah. The answer, in the middle of my worst point, not in a million years. If you asked me when I was struggling, I'd say, let me just stack shelves rather than go through this. But now I'm out of it, I would say the opposite. But when you're right in the worst of it, couldn't you just have walked away, you asked? And he said, that's very hard to say. It's your career, you're living. So in a way, you can't. I sort of wonder, with that in mind, what you would say to this bunch of England players right here, right now, with a week to go. Question. Well, I mean, Kieran was a fascinating interview. He's, both his sons are incredibly talented. Um, must have picked up the wrong children at hospital, I think. Sort of, <laughs> but he, he, he's put, you know, both, is a drawbridge. Both of his sons are playing uh, for Saracens and junior rugby. So whatever he said in the book, he's clearly, yeah. he's clearly hopefully passing on some of that advice to, to a very talented group. Um, look, f for some of these England players, it's their first ever World Cup experience. And for others, you know, they've been to World Cup finals, etc but they all have to find their why. Why are they there? You know, what I realized by writing this book and catching up with Mike and all the various players is that we were all on a journey of discovery. We were all there for a reason, but we weren't there for the same reason. You know, we all came at it from different parts. You know, you, you listen to Jason Robinson's story of how he got there, you know, Mike's story, mine, everyone's different, but when you come together, it is some, you, you have a unique opportunity. And, you know, their careers won't be defined by this performance necessarily, but uh, I think, for any of us who played, it's about representing your country in the right way and wanting to do yourselves proud and, and do yourselves justice. And to this point, this year, this England team haven't done that. And they need to go and analyse the reasons why and come out with a performance that they and we can be proud of. Pressure comes on, gas gets turned up. Do you think England have got, can find, whatever it is needed to I beat think, Argentina and then see? I think we got to a happy place when we got to the semi-final. We, we, were, we were sketchy, we, weren't, we didn't play great in the World Cup, but we went into it as the number one side in the world. England go into this World Cup as the number eight side in the world. They're very different, no expectation. I don't think they can look at any further ahead than the first game against Argentina. And just take, I know it sounds very cliched, but just take it game by game individual performance by individual performance. And yes, they've got the capacity to surprise. We win the first two games against Argentina and Japan. It's a very different World Cup. Echo, that? Yeah, 100%, I think. Still uh, believe, you still believe. I, I, look, I, I, but again, well, you know, when we in 2015, we got knocked out of the, the, the pool stages. You know, we went and had that big send off at 02. We'd never beaten, beaten consistently Southern Hemisphere sides. So I don't know why everyone thought we were going to suddenly win it and then we didn't get out of the pool stage, why it was such a, you know, a massive disappointment. I think we've got to be pragmatic and, and realistic. I think Lawrence's point is, is absolutely key about individuals. You know, rugby is all about positives and negatives. If you can, you can reinforce three positives in a row, you're making it, you're making progress. England at the moment just do negative, negative, positive, negative, negative. They don't, they can't put it consistently. That's all you've got to do in the game. And that that is tied together by making sure that you reduce your handling errors without going inside yourself, making sure you make your tackles, you're responsible for yourself, you work hard for the, for the man either side of you, and that's all you worry about. And don't look any further than that. And I think, as Lawrence has said, as Mike says, nothing's actually happened. Yeah. You know, nothing's happened yet. You can always be a pragmatic and always be realistic and be excited, and you'll never go go against England. It might needs a bit. He needs a bit of help, Steve Ball. So yeah. I'd get every, would you I'd bring get, I'd get each in? parent to write a little letter to their to their son and actually give it to them and remind them what it means and what you know what all the sacrifices they've made because they need a lift at the moment. And if you ever need any inspiration, you look internally, don't you really? And uh, they need to they need to find the right level of emotion. We don't want to go out there and give away fifteen red cards, you know. But we need to find an emotional level that is consummate with being one of the top sides in the world and we're not there yet would be quite english wouldn't it we've seen it before in 07 we've seen it in, in other sports the backs against the wall <laughs> yeah i mean thrive in that environment <coughs> yeah. i mean you look at 2015 we went in there with a we generally thought we had a chance to win it <laughs> yes <Yeah, so, laughs> <laughs> so, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't predict what is going to happen and I, I i still go through that squad and go through the team and you look at and there's quality players all the way yeah, through it so you have to believe that they can pull it together i think they need to take more ownership and if they can they get a good win against Argentina, and that we're talking performances now more than just winning. It has to be a good performer. Then you don't know where it'll go. Yeah. And as as we've talked about in other World Cups, you never know. You know, last last World Cup, South Africa were terrible for six games, but the seventh game they played unbelievably well. Yeah. So you can do it, and they've got to believe that, and they've got. But it's got to. It's going to take a performance on the field to then. 
turn everyone else. To rise like a pheasant from the flames, <laughs> wise yeah. man's once yeah. said, isn't that right? <laughs> As Roddy once said. of Brothers. <laughs> band of Brothers. And you began band. with an F. And you began <laughs> with an F. Well done. I think we sort of, we've mixed that around a little bit. I think we still hope. We, we, we're going to be there come what may. Lolla be in the studio on the ITV gravy yeah. train. We'll be, we'll be out there, you know, cashing it up. Trying to make sense of what Johnny and Clive said. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some yeah. 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 Sorry, Lolla, keep it short. We've got, go <laughs> we, we've got to go to an ad break now. Okay. <laughs> we've run out of time. <laughs> we'll put told everyone what he would do if he was a coach, but you aren't. And, and Johnny's talked about psychological warfare that nobody understands. Yeah. Transcendental yeah. transference of the I incidentals. Like, what are you Good. talking about? <laughs> I'll have a slice of that. Good luck with the book. Thank I hope you. it goes very well. Thank you. Keep touring it. And um, we've also done a special lock-in on this week's show as well where we can hear more about Lawrence and, and the journey he's been on with the book. Lovely to see you. Go Thank forth you and conquer. Much. I hope the team follows suit. There goes the lol. Off in his limo into the night. I do love the fact that he, the, the, his emotional drivers, there aren't many in sport, particularly English sport, who take you to those places. That was always his strength though, wasn't it? It was always my, no one comes to our manor, get your no, tools out. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not just about, it's about making sure you're aware of what you're playing for before you go out there. It's just a, a stark reminder. He's also one of the best orators that I've ever seen as a captain. You know, it was, it was very interesting. I was going to say this to him while I was here. That they always say what the difference between Martin Johnson and Lawrence was. He said there was a fight in a bar. Right, also, boy, boys, England team trashed a bar. Um, John O would quietly deal with it, um, you know, make sure he'd speak to him. There'd be nothing we'd get out and everything would get paid for. If Lowell do it, he would do exactly the same thing, except he'd make a profit off the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the difference between them. That's Commission. It, he'd, get, he'd get, take money off the lads to pay for it, but the bill would be a grand and he'd take three grand off the lads and he'd make two grand off the top of it. That was the difference between the two cabs. But he's also an incredible um, person. And, and, you know, and also, you know, if you know about Lawrence and his life and the things that he's been through and the passions that he's had and the losses he's had, you know, and the ups and downs. That 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 in itself, there's a lot of emotion in that person to be able to speak of it. And and you know, he was always someone that had a lot of bravado, but always delivered. What England was, England's one of England's best ever back row players, if not you know, right up there in the, the top one or two. And I think for me that when you talk the talk and walk the walk, yeah. and you've got a, a demeanor about you, and you're intelligent. All of that goes into it, creating a guy that I think you know knows what he's talking about. And you can see, you still, you know, I, I think it, it sits with me, and it sat with me a, a lot more recently with England's performances that we still care about this England team. Yeah. We still feel part of it in terms of you, you, you're part of the history, you're part of the what's made it be what it is today. And you want to back, you want to back those boys and understand. But you know. It's easier said than done. I think we should get all of the lads back in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let, let them know and we'll see. They've got a punch's chance. That is for sure. Right. Just before we go, you're putting your boots back on again this season? Well, hopefully. Ho job hopefully. The old knees, uh, the old knees, the old, these old knees ain't what they used to be. Um, but hopefully, yes, I will get back out there for Minch. Um, and with that in mind, grassroots clubs can now uh, access P Pichero. GPS, uh, a game-changing performance tracker that gives uh, every player the same tools as the pro. So, you know, apply for that. Yeah, I'm a tech lover too. And if you get involved, you can track your speed, distance and intensity on the pitch and instantly view your data via an app on your smartphone <laughs> after every training session and match. Do you know that every prop has just started sweating? Yeah, yeah. Be that, that. yeah. Well, if you are into it and you want to go better this year, then Pitch Hero GPS are giving listeners of the good, the bad and the rugby an amazing deal. Right now, you can head to pitcherogps.com and use the promo code RUGBY20 to get 20% off the Pitch Hero GPS player bundle. Do it. Play better. And like, she share, retweet. Like, she your like, impressive retweet. Like, she your share. Results. Like, she like share. She share. Yeah. Yeah. Does it track that? I don't know. <laughs> um, right, just before we go, it may be beat tough being an England fan right now. It may well all be all right on the night. We certainly hope so. But we are determined to have an utterly sensational time in France over the next two months. And if you like the game, we are going to be bringing you fabulous content, stories, interviews across the tournament, across all of the countries taking part. Um, and if you are a rugby fan, remember to love the rugby, not just your team. So please like, subscribe and share all things GBR if you haven't already and keep the faith in the meantime. We have been the good, the bad and the rugby in partnership with our very good friends at Continental Tires. We are a folding pocket production produced by Shara Kilgallen and Tom Edwards. Here is to a belting party and keep the faith if you're an England fan.